I'm Livestrong GM Jess Barron, and we're here in New York City with Ariana Huffington, founder of The Huffington Post and founder and CEO of Thrive Global. We're interviewing her for our Livestrong Stronger Women series. Ariana, you are the ultimate successful and outspoken woman. You are really the truly the ultimate stronger woman. But in being so, I'm sure in this political climate and the climate that we're in, living in today, there must be a lot of scrutiny, intense scrutiny and criticism that you face. Can you tell us a little bit about how you handle that that might offer some tips for other women in that situation? So I think one of the greatest um, skills of leadership is being unflappable. I call it being in the eye of the hurricane. And uh, anytime you do anything in the world, there is going to be criticism. So I don't believe in, in growing a thick skin. You know how some people say that. I believe in listening to criticism, seeing if there is something valid there that you can learn from. And if not, you know, staying on your course and um, moving forward with what your vision is for what you want to achieve. I love that you mention unflappable. When I think of busy women, I, and they're often juggling their children and their uh, home lives as well as work life, I do think unflappable. Now, I noticed you have a lot of women in leadership positions at Thrive Global. What is the number one piece of advice that you would give to a woman about career advice? So the number one piece of career advice is what they tell us on aeroplanes. Put your own oxygen mask first. Because I think what women often do is put everything else first and then put themselves last. And as a result, I believe they're less effective at what they're doing. Because if you're running on empty, you are going to be less creative, less uh, successful at everything you're doing. If you take the time to refuel yourself, then you'd be able to give to everyone around you, whether at work or at home, um, from your abundance rather than from your emptiness. That's excellent. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your email policy? I heard that you are, when people are going away from the office, you're shutting down their email. Tell us a little bit well, about that. Well, it's not email. mandatory, but okay. we have an email tool mm -hmm. that we call Thrive Away. Uh, so when you're on vacation, Often people try to stay up with work, and it defeats the purpose of vacation in terms of recharging. So Thrive Away allows you to make, make, to make it possible for everybody who emails you or texts you to receive an email or text back that says, you know, Ariana is on vacation until January 4th. Um, if this is urgent, please contact so-and-so. You assign somebody to handle urgent matters. If it is not, um, email her again after January 4th. This email will be deleted. So that way, the onus is on the person emailing you. You know that urgent things are going to be handled, and you can really take that time um, to recharge, to be with your family, whatever you are doing, and return to work ready to face whatever is there. We love that you're taking that policy of balance and concern for your employees. When you were coming up with Huffington Post, making it you know, one of the number one world, uh, news sites in the world, could you have taken that policy on balance and email yourself or for your employees then? Oh, absolutely. I think what we need to uh, realize, and all the latest science, all the latest data proves it, is that, in fact, when we are recharged, we are more creative, more effective, more successful. It's just that our culture, uh, ever since the first industrial revolution, has come to believe that being always on is the way to succeed. But that's a cultural delusion. It's just not a fact. And so on the Thrive Global Media platform, we both bring together the latest science, but we also bring together uh, new role models, like we had a great piece by Jeff Bezos, um, and the headline was, Why Am I Getting Eight Hours Sleep is Good for Amazon Shareholders. Mm. We had a great piece um, by Eric Schmidt about why he prioritizes sleep, because otherwise he says, my life descends to quantum chaos. Um, so beyond sleep, when it comes to a relationship with technology, people recognize that they need to set some boundaries. So we have a lot of um, videos or, uh, or uh, pieces from 
people ranging from Selena Gomez to Mark Cuban writing about how they set boundaries to their relationship with technology. That sounds excellent, and I love how you said it helps you getting the proper amount of rest and balance to be creatively inspired. So when you need to find creative inspiration, what do you do? So I find that um, if I have enough sleep, which for me is eight hours a night, you know, most people need seven to nine hours unless they have a genetic mutation, in <laughs> which case they can do great on three or four. That's not me. Um, if I uh, have taken time to meditate, to work out, um, I find this set me up um, for the conditions for maximum creativity. If I'm running on empty and I'm just getting through my to-do list of the day, then I, I'm more transactional and less creative. And when you think about creativity, I also imagine that you're inspired by a lot of the books that you read. You've written 15 books yourself, which is very impressive. What was the last great book that you read? Can you tell us about that? So. Um, the last great book, uh, and I say that because it's still on my nightstand and I read it again and again, is a book called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Mm -hmm. What I love about him is that he was um, a Stoic philosopher and he was also the emperor of Rome. Mm -hmm. So he had to deal with every challenge you can imagine, you know, wars and plagues and betrayals. But he was able to remain unflappable, to go back to the beginning of our interview, by recharging himself, by reconnecting with his own center of wisdom and strength. That's excellent. And I love that you return to the theme of unflappability, because yes. it does seem so <laughs> important. Now, you announced recently in the past year or so that you were leaving Huffington Post to focus entirely on Thrive Global. Can you tell us a bit about why your mission moving to healthy living content is so important to you? Why do you, why do you think it's an essential place to focus your career? Because I, I see the amount of suffering that is generated around the world because of this delusion that we need to be always on in order to succeed. You know, we see the, the cost in terms of health, in terms of mental health, um, in terms of relationships. And it is so important to me to change the culture around that. And the mission of Thrive is to change the culture, both through a media platform um, and also through the work we do with corporations to help change their culture and, and support their well-being and the sense of purpose of their employees. So I'd like to invite everybody watching to tell us your stories uh, about how you recharge and, and maybe any stories of burnout or when you decided to change the way you work and live. And then we can post them on your site and ours. It's a great idea. I love that idea, and I think our readers would love that. Now, more than 50% of Livestrong's audience are millennial women. What advice would you give to a 25-year-old woman or to your 25-year-old self, if it were you? Oh, I would um, give the advice that I think would have made my life much easier, which is, you know, take care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself and prioritize your well-being, you're going to be more effective and more successful at everything you want to do. And also, my favorite Rumi quote, live life as though everything is rigged in your favor. Because there are going to be obstacles, there are going to be challenges, there are going to be things that don't turn out the way you want them to. But somehow, mysteriously, when you look back at your life, something better is around the corner. What a great quote. One more fun one. Will you tell us what's your favorite cheat day meal and or snack? What are some of your favorite so, cheats? So I am a coffee addict. Do you? So I love um, blended coffees. I love um, um, cappuc single shot cappuccinos. I don't really need a lot of caffeine. I just love the whole creaminess of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you concerned at all about organics when it comes to coffee and the produce? Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm very concerned about organics. And I, I eat very simply and healthily. And um, I feel better when I do that. Wonderful. But my coffee is my cheat. <laughs> and it's a healthy cheat at that. Coffee is good for you. It has healthy antioxidants. If you could have any other career other than this one, Ariana, which, what would it be? 
I think, you know, in a sense, I've had multiple careers. <laughs> you know, as a writer, um, <clears throat> as a political journalist, as an editor, um, now as the founder of Thrive Global. So um, I think that if I, if I could have had one career, I would love to be sort of a philosopher. Because I think looking at life, you know, and what does it mean, and, and, um, and helping people through practical philosophy live lives in a way that is um, happier and healthier could be another great career. What also, you spoke a little bit about balance. What does it mean to you to have it all? Is it even possible for us to have it all? Or are there some things that need to be compromised? I think we can have it all provided we start with taking care of ourselves. Excellent. Your quote up there in the Fortune article is also really great about we take better care of our cell phones than we do ourselves. How can we flip the script on that? I think by setting boundaries to our relationship with our phone, um, charging it outside our bedroom. We have a charging station that looks like a phone bed mm -hmm. where everybody can put their phones before they go to sleep. Um, charging phones away from the dining room table where, or the kitchen table when you're having a meal with your family. Just little boundaries make a difference. That's right, and sleep is your game now. This is the last question that we have. Sleep Revolution, read your book, it's excellent. You, what are some tips? People are writing to us saying it's so hard to get sleep. We have anxiety, we can't calm down at night. What are some of the tips that you have for people that have a hard time getting sleep? I think the most important thing is to remember if you are a parent, what you did with your baby. You know, you didn't just drop it into the crib or the, uh, or the little bed, you know, you had a whole ritual, giving the baby a bath, uh, lowering the lights, uh, reading a story, singing a lullaby. We need to do the same with ourselves. We need to pick our own ritual. Uh, I've recorded a parody of Good Night Moon called Good Night Smartphone that you can download for free from Audible. And that can be the beginning of your transition to sleep. Love that idea. That's a great idea. And I love how you've talked about the romance, returning to the romance yes, of sleep. Yes, rekindling the romance with sleep. It's an excellent idea for everyone. Well, thank you so much, thank Ariana. You. We thank wish you the you best so of luck much. with Thrive thank Global. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much.